deadline week. So Ben uh, hit our first uh, marker, uh, had a successful session so far, obviously just about to go on the floor and do some more work. Still have some committee work uh, yet to be done. But uh, really proud of the members for how much uh, effort they put in. We, we hit the ground running and really haven't stopped. And so I'll just take any questions you may have. The House has a bill that deals with the, gro the grocery tax looking to repeal it. You, you've discussed it several times. Your thoughts on this newest effort to uh, eliminate the grocery tax? Yeah, so I'm not familiar with that bill. I, I'm familiar with the concept. So I don't know if they've exempted the local taxation. I don't know if they've worked with OML in the past, uh, Oklahoma Municipal League. Uh, we'll take a look at it when it comes over here. Uh, we're part of a working group now that is uh, between us, the governor, and the speaker on trying to come up with some tax reform. We'll see if that makes the cut. But you're not ruling it out right now, you'd say? Not ruling it out. Um, there was, uh, you know, I had ran a bill last year uh, to try to eliminate the state portion of the grocery sales tax, the 4.5, uh, and worked with a bunch of people on that. I don't know if he'll make the cut yet or not. Why keep the discussions about tax reform kind of behind the scenes as opposed to out in the open at the moment? Yeah, it's just we want to compare notes to see where we're all headed uh, on it. Eventually, obviously, it'll be public if something comes out of it. Uh, but we're trying to share some data, share concerns, um, share thoughts where we're not, um, there, there's no real thought, hey, we've got to keep this private. It's just a working group, and that's the way we do working groups to get something where we can get some agreement. If we can't get agreement, we'll, we'll uh, allow the people to know that as well. The Ratepayer Protection Act, can you talk a little bit about that, the goals of that? Yeah, so Winter Storm Uri, um really expose some weaknesses, not just in Oklahoma, but across the United States. And so a lot of the provisions we've put into that act uh, were aimed at trying to get increased storage, increased capacity, uh, rate stability. And then on the other side, the, the um, performance-based rate, trying to get it out of uh, being so litigious at the Corporation Commission and allow rate stabilization. And I think I explained last week where it wasn't a stair step where we we go and then there's a big step and then plateaus and then big step but more of a, a gradual uh, climb to the same point and so uh, we've got a lot of work to do still working with those in the um, electric utility space but also those in the oil and gas uh, space it's something that's worked really well in the natural gas space and trying to see if we can make it work in the electrical um, utility side do you expect kind of the bill how it is now to kind of be the final version of it? Because I know the ROFR was really the main thing that people were really opposed to since you've now taken that out of the bill. Um, and it seems like you got a pretty widespread support in committee today, too. Yeah, I got widespread support. I know there's some people that still have concerns, and I want to hear those concerns. But ROFR, uh, I had a meeting with uh, as many stakeholders as I could have a couple weeks ago and asked everyone who was just there because they opposed the ROFR part to stand up. and. Uh, been, it was overwhelming uh, how many people were there just for that. And I said, let's not let that be an impediment to getting good policy done. And so I pulled it from there. There's still some talk about is the storage capacity part of it um, adequate? Right now, uh, according to uh, one of the utilities that spoke today, you know, OGE, they think that that puts them at about 14 day storage capacity, which would have weathered Uri, but we need to make sure that it's sufficient to weather anything like that. Could you talk about what is the current storage and where it's going to come It's like point, point 0.2 BCF uh, to 4 um, BCF. However, I, I'm not somebody that can tell you, quantify the BCF side. This is just what people are telling me. It's easier for me to look at in days. Mm -hmm. They were able to weather um, the storm better than a lot of utilities around the country, uh, but I think we can improve. You anticipate, Roger, well, if you go act uh, to come back again under the legislation, I think there's another bill out there. You know, I think uh, Senator Paxton had that other version. There may be one from the House, too, that I'm not aware of, but the, the Senator Paxton version is not advancing. Uh, he, he chose not to pursue that one this session. I'm not going to put it back into this bill, if that's the question. If there's one coming from the House, I'm not aware of it. Do you anticipate an interim study, <coughs> part of an interim study issue on that topic? It probably will be, 
There probably will be, but it's not going to be requested by me. I think if it gets requested, it'll be somebody on the Energy com Committee or the maybe even the Chair of Energy. That I can't guarantee that's going to happen, but I know there's enough discussions on it. Um, you know, it's a real complicated issue. In 2013, we had this same topic. I actually voted against Rofer in 2013, um, and there was a lot of controversy around it at that time as well. The problem is these these uh, transmission lines that are built in the middle, somebody may bid on those and then fail to live up to the expectations of that bid, so really underbid it, and then the costs go way up. So we've got to look at it, but I'm by no means an expert on that and decided to drop it and get more expertise in the PBR side and the storage part and focus on that in my bill. It's been a couple weeks since you've seen the House education plan and Speaker McCall's education plan, and now uh, Senator Daniels says she's not going to run her ESA bills. They obviously didn't advance this week. Um, so that kind of leaves that with the, the House plan as the only option, although you could modify it. Have you given any more thoughts about what you like, what you don't like about the plan? Yeah, we're having a lot of conversations in the caucus about uh, ideas, uh, namely that Senator Pugh and Senator Pemberton and others have had. Uh, and seeing if we can incorporate those ideas along with the policy. I'm very excited that the speaker is embracing school choice and trying to figure out how to uh, get a win-win for everyone, but we're, we're wanting to make sure that the Senate priorities don't just go by the wayside, and um, we're, we're working with our counterparts in the House to, to that end. Most of the discussions, I don't want to misstate that, are internal to the Senate right now, but we anticipate working with our counterparts. It's probably a better way of saying that. Do you believe there's enough money to do the education plan, which I think has at most an $800 million price tag and tax relief, tax cuts, and kind of all the other things? That's one of the reasons we're going a little slower. We want to look at it globally, uh, the whole picture of finances. You know, we've been a little bit more um, reticent to, to do um, some of the more expensive things just because we do have a fear about the economy not being sustainable long term and so we'll look at it all uh, together globally uh, and try to get really good education policy done and also if there's some kind of tax reform we can come agree agreement to we'll make sure that we can afford it all on a recurring basis not just this year and next year because we do have a good amount of reserves but we have seen in years past a good amount of reserves can be squandered quickly. Mr. Pro Tem, uh, you said Senator Pugh ideas and other members ideas on education may have asked you about this this year or last year, I can't remember what is time, but um, Pew has a bill on uh, maternity leave, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, philosophically, I, I think a lot of people are in favor of that, but there's questions about what is the actual cost of that, what are the numbers, do you have any concept of where that is in the discussion and what those challenges are? Right now, I think we have a place uh, placeholder at $25 million uh, uh, on the sheet, if I'm not mistaken. But we're trying to get better numbers on it. We know it's not going to be um, cheap, but it's a good policy, and it's one we're trying to pursue. Having a proposal for an education-related tax credit sort of moves the education discussion into the budget discussion in a different way. Or is that happening, or how does that influence your thinking? Well, you know, when you do budgeting, you typically want to get the big rocks in place first. Uh, and then you start arguing about the parts that fill in between the big rocks. And um, so it, it's given us some level of uncertainty about um, where to start on the budget process. We're obviously having those conversations already, but that's a big question mark. Uh, we need to book it at its full value just to make sure that when we get to the end we have a balanced budget. It's changed with some, but education always takes up the, the biggest space anyway. Um, what we're trying to look at is in balance of cash flow and uh, reserves, making sure that we don't squander those. One more thing on the rate payer um, protection. There's been conversations on the House side too, kind of talking about monopolies, og and and whatnot. Obviously you were kind of saying too that people kind of see their rates go up when they get the emails from og and &E or whatnot. Um, is there anything you want to say on that, just kind of protecting a person from how are, are people who look at this bill how will this impact them I'm kind of dumbing it down a little bit 
Well, it, it's intended to protect them against the huge increases that just come at one point. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say there won't ever be increases because it's you have to reinvest in the transmission. Um, I I believe that some protections that are right now voluntarily voluntary, this bill will mandate uh, in allowing people to have payoff plans and those type of things that will protect the consumers. So I think at the end of the day, it will be tremendous for the ratepayers. Uh, but the the base load cost on most of these is the price of ga natural gas and uh, the other fuel sources. So uh, with that ebb and flow, you'll also see an ebb and flow in the billing. A couple more, and then we get to get them. What do you make of Project Connect? And I hear if we do get land Project Connect, the legislature may have to help um, potentially put some more money towards site work in prior. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on that? Oh, excited about the opportunity, trying to get major mega project in. The LEAD Act uh, was designed, obviously, with uh, trying to lure something like that in. Um, we had to modify it this week to, from the 4,000 to 3,500 jobs, but the economic impact and projections are much uh, higher than the previous, and it doesn't have the tag-along project that the previous one did. Um, I, I'm excited. I don't know what our real chances are uh, because you just never know in these things um, but I think we put ourselves in a really good position to potentially land it and if we do it'll be tremendous for for the future of Oklahoma why the decision to um, sort of uh, sunset the money right like so if the project connect doesn't come in a month a month from now you all will be 698 million dollars richer to spend this year or have you lost faith, you know, long term in attracting a mega manufacturer? Of this no, business? the lead, lead act will stay remain regardless. What we did on that is we front loaded the quality jobs kicker, uh, the quality jobs base, and then the kicker on the investment tax credit. So you had a 2.5% kicker on the quality jobs and a 1% on the investment tax credit, uh, best of my memory on that bill last year. And what we did is we just took the 10 year uh, projection on that put it in an account and so we wouldn't have the same problems we had with wind with an open-ended problem and had a, a known amount. That will be the same regardless if there's $698 million in that account or not. We'll, we've set up a system to where if the legislature and the governor uh, agree on projects that we just have to put money in there. You don't have to front load it all. Uh, you could do it in one tenth, you could do it in one fifth. Uh, these projects aren't contingent on all that money being there. We just thought it was wise since we did have the resources last year uh, to front load it. And y'all should know by tomorrow if y'all are You know, I have not been in direct contact with the company this time around, and so I hear that they're, they're having meetings, I'm hearing the same thing you are from the same press conferences, um, and I just... I don't want to mislead you because I don't know if there will be an announcement of the vote uh, tomorrow or not. I'm not privy to that. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you.